Hi, beloved daughters, it's Danielle Kelly. I am the women's ministry leader here at Chicago West. I wanted to share something with you in my time with the Lord today. It ties to our sermon series that we've been in, um, following the life of Elijah. After Ahab dies, uh, the Lord appoints a new king, and that is Jehu. And he tells Jehu to go and kill all of Ahab's descendants, and he tells him to get rid of Jezebel. And that's exactly what he does. He, he follows the Lord's instructions, and it's pretty bloody as you read through his account in 2 Kings. And there was even a part in 2 Kings chapter 10 where Jehu gathers all the Baal worshipers and he he gathers them and he kind of fakes them out and he makes them believe that he's going to worship Baal too, but it was a way to set them up so he could get them all gathered together and kill them. So you would think that Jehu has a lot of zeal for the Lord. There's even a part in the scriptures that he challenges other like, join me if you have zeal for the Lord. But it's really interesting. I want to share at the end of his reign, you get to 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 28, and it says, Then Jehu wiped out Baal from Israel, but Jehu did not turn aside from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, which he, which he made Israel to sin, that is, the golden calves that were in Bethel and in Dan. So let's stop right there. So Jehu obeys the Lord and he gets rid of the Ahab's descendants. He gets rid of Jezebel. He even gets rid of Baal worshipers and gets clears the land of Baal. But what he doesn't do is fully turn his heart to the Lord. The scripture says he turned, but Jehu did not turn aside from the sins of Jeroboam, Jeroboam the son of Nabat, which he made Israel to sin. That is the golden calves that were in Bethel and, and, Dan, and Dan. So even though Jehu cleared out the Baals, what he didn't clear out were the other idols. And this had me thinking about our theme for the year of laying aside every sin or hindrance that easily entangles us, inspired by Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And it had me thinking that there are times where God will call us to clear out something, but instead of, we clear it out, but we don't clear it out fully because our affections are not fully for the Lord. And we see this in Jehu's life. Jehu, if he had a full zeal of God, his zeal for God should not have turned him to any cat, golden calves, but it did. And it had me thinking, how many times do we clear something, an idol out of our lives, but then we replace it and resurrect it with another one? Right now, the Lord is really dealing with me with food. Food has been an idol for a long time in me, um, in my life. And this is an idol that he's like, it's time for you to let it go. And what I mean by that is I overeat, I emotionally eat, I go to, I go to food when I'm happy, sad, mad all of it and it's become an idol it's been something that i've found comfort in instead of finding comfort in our holy god our savior so this is something that he's clearing out in my life but i notice that as i clear out this idol of food i am tempted to try to replace that idol with something else so jay who cleared out the bales but then he never cleared out the golden calves and here's the thing in verse 30, it says, And the Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in carrying out what is right in my eyes and have done in the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, your sons to the fourth generation shall sit on his on the throne of Israel. But Jehu was not careful to walk in the law of the Lord and the God of Israel with all his heart. He did not turn from the sins of Jeroboam, which he, which he made Israel to sin. And then it goes on to say, in those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. So God is like, thank you, Jehu. Thank you for obeying me. And because you obeyed me with clearing out the bales, I'm going to bless you to the fourth generation. But even though God blessed him, he still turned away. So I just think that that's something for us to ponder on of we can clear things out and receive the blessings of the Lord. But are we are we turning away from God? Are we turning 
fully to him? Are we allowing him to be our all in all? Are we allowing him to receive our full worship and not our partial worship? Yeah, we've given up our bells, but have we given up our golden calves? So today I want to encourage you to really reflect on your life and ask God, what what is the bail? What are the bales in my life that need to be removed? But what are the golden calves too? What are the idols? And don't be like Jehu and and do this mighty work and all this effort, put all this effort into getting rid of the bales. But then you still have secret idols. You still have idols on the side um, that you go to. So that is the encouragement I have for you today. If you want to read more about what I just shared, the account of Jehu is in. It starts in 2 Kings chapter 9, and then it goes all the way to the end of chapter 10. And so that is my encouragement for you today. Are you, where's your true passion for the Lord? Are you just doing it with a hidden motive? Because I really think that Jehu had some ulterior motive too in that. Like, was it fully to please the Lord, because if it was fully to please the Lord, he would have never, ever walked in the ways of Jeroboam and worshiped golden calves. So what are your motives? As God says, clear out your idols. You may obey, but is your motive to really honor him? Or are you just doing it with a hidden agenda and you have your heart set on turning aside from the Lord in the end? I hope you have a wonderful day. Blessings. You are loved.